There is a ton of misinformation floating around between the MFT and full frame formats in regards to how sensors work with noise and depth of field. In this video, I'll be clearing up these discrepancies and clarifying the differences on how each of these two function. For the purposes of this video, we will pretend that APS-C or medium format doesn't really exist so that we don't have so many variables to compare to. However, the same exact concepts apply across any sensor size format and aren't just limited to MFT and full frame. Before we dive into comparison between full frame and MFT specifically, it's important that I need to clear up one misconception that for whatever reason has become debatable as of lately. ISO doesn't literally increase your light gathering capabilities. Rather, it digitally brightens your scene. Therefore, ISO does create more noise if all other things are considered equal. It's very similar to brightening an image in post-production, except more effective because it's done in camera. When you pull up an image in exposure in Lightroom, you'll notice more noise becoming visible. Sometimes people say that ISO doesn't matter for noise capture, which is very false. However, what they probably have been understandingly misled by is that how you expose an image can be just as important as which ISO you choose. Underexposing an image can lead to excessive noise capture even at low ISOs, while slightly overexposing an image at high ISOs can help soften some of these noise problems. You can capture less details in the data in shadows than in highlights. Therefore, overexposing can lead to better quality. This isn't the end all be all, and like I said, it won't make your 12,000 ISO MFT format image look clean, but it might help it to look a lot better than if you had exposed it on the darker end. Now, let's get into the meat of why you really clicked on this video. Sensors constantly improve in noise control, so these results vary slightly depending on your specific camera models. However, there are still physical differences between an MFT and full frame sensor that will generally apply no matter what specific model you have. So coming up, I'm speaking in general terms and not hyper specific examples, so please keep that in mind. MFT is similar to taking a full frame image and cropping it in. In fact, some full frame cameras have a function that allows you to do that with an APS-C crop, for example, in camera, which is the same exact concept as an MFT crop. This is what allows you to achieve double the reach with the same focal length lens and why so many wildlife photographers in specific consider MFT. Notice that two repercussions happen because of this crop in though. To start with the first, the noise is now more noticeable. The noise was more fine on the full frame image, whereas the MFT image, it's a little bit more chunky. This is due to the fact that the full frame sensor and the MFT sensor tried to cram in the same amount of pixels into the same space. However, something more drastic happens if we shoot on the same megapixel sensor between both full frame and MFT. If shot at the same megapixel count, the full frame sensor will have nearly four times the space to capture light for each given pixel as the MFT sensor. In this example, the S5 II of 24 megapixel full frame simply has almost four times the space available to capture light per pixel, resulting in it being much more sensitive to capturing light than on the G9 II MFT sensor. Think of it as a solar panel with one having more space to capture sunlight than the other. This amount that it's able to capture will directly affect how much data the sensor gets from each pixel. Now for the second repercussion. The depth of field appears less shallow on the MFT lens than on the full frame lens, and people get confused on this a lot. While the lens itself is quite literally taking in the same depth of field between a full frame and an MFT lens, the sensor is what causes the difference in depth of field captured between the two. Remember our previous example, where it's essentially like taking a crop of a full frame image. This is what we're doing when we switch between full frame and MFT sensors. Check out this side-by-side -side image of a full frame image captured at 6.3 at 600 millimeter full frame equivalent and an MFT image captured at 6.3 at the same 600 millimeter full frame equivalent. The depth of field is less shallow on the MFT sensor than on the full frame sensor, which shows an example of how 6.3 does not achieve the same depth of field across all sensor sizes. In terms of depth of field, an MFT sensor captures two full stops less in depth of field than a full frame equivalent. So for example, a 6.3 depth of field on an MFT sensor will come out looking the same as a F13 depth of field on a full frame. 
So when some people refer to MFT 400mm 6.3 lens being equivalent to an 800mm 6.3 full frame focal length, what they truly mean is that it's an 800mm f13 full frame focal equivalent, which is often ignored by most MFT shooters. This doesn't mean MFT isn't useful, just something to be aware of and not to dismiss when you're deciding which camera to buy and when you're comparing images. If this video helped out, I'd be honored if you subscribe below. And if you want to check out my review of the Panasonic G92 that came out recently on my main channel, check out this video here in the end screen.